Bass are harder to catch than ever, and groundbreaking research might explain why. What if I told you bass could pass down what they've learned, literally teaching their kids to ignore your lures, even if they've never seen them before? Yeah, it's wild. Let's dive in. So recently, biologists have studied how some animals, and especially fish, are able to pass down what they learn to future generations. That's right, you're talking about a fish learns something now and can pass it on to not only its children, but its grandchildren. I think we can all agree that fishing's tougher these days than it's ever been. You know, the, the angling pressure, the amount of people on the lakes, the quality of fishermen, especially with stuff like YouTube and the internet has made all fishermen better, but fish are smarter and tougher to catch than ever before. So research has shown that bass will react negatively to like sonar pings, the sound of your sonar transmitting underwater. When they get close, the bass have learned to run away from that. Same goes with boat noises, like loud noises, stomping your feet in the bottom of the boat, or even like your trolling motor, the sound of that underwater. And what they've also seen with bass, they don't need to actually have a negative experience themselves. They can watch another bass hit a lure, chase a lure, and turn away from it, and they can learn from that bass if the water's clear enough and they see it, that that's not a real living fish and they learn by watching someone else. Now, some of that can be explained by conditioning. And cows, say in a pasture that has an electric fence, if a cow hits it one time, gets to a jolt, it's probably not gonna touch that fence again. That's conditioning. So then there's other things in fishing that just regular conditioning doesn't really explain. So the one thing that really sticks in my mind though are some of these lures that used to be so good and they don't seem like they work that well anymore. And people don't even throw them much anymore, so you would think that when you stop throwing them, they would get better. You know, like a jitterbug comes to mind, something like that. Used to bloop on top. That was everybody, our grandfathers, all their favorite lure. Doesn't seem to really work that well. And it goes for so many of our favorite baits. You know, they work great, and then everybody uses them. Fish get conditioned, but then nobody uses them. So then you have them in the garage, and five years later, ten years later, when you think, man, nobody's throwing this lure for five or 10 years, that's like two or three generations of fish, I should be able to take it out and just hammer them with it. Well, guess what? I don't know if it works for you, but for most of us, my buddies and I, we always talk about, man, that lure used to catch him so good, I try it now, it doesn't seem to work. It's almost like the fish have learned that it's not a lure and it just doesn't work like it used to. So here's where the science come in, and biologists and scientists are starting to understand a couple different aspects of epigenetics. And that basically, it's a big word, meaning that you're able to pass on memories to future generations without actually changing your DNA, but actually control or changing how the DNA, some of these genes are turned on and off. Now, two of the main factors that they talk about when it comes to fish and animals are transgenerational plasticity and DNA methylation, which let's just call those two TP and DM, right? Transgenerational plasticity and DNA methylation. Like I said, TP and DM. Don't really need to know the name, just we're gonna talk about what it does and how it impacts fish. So for mammals, humans included, basically our memories, when we pass on our genes, they're not passed on to future generations. It's basically wiped clean. But for fish especially, it seems that their memory bank is not totally shut off, that some of their memories, some of their experiences actually get passed on to future generations. So in one of the most notable studies done on this by Emory University, they took mice, and when they got exposed to the scent of cherry blossoms, they got a mild shock. So incredibly, the offspring of these mice, their children and even their grandchildren, when they were exposed to cherry blossom scent, they had a negative reaction, even though they were never actually shocked like their grandparents were. So researchers found that the offspring of these mice actually had a different brain structure, especially in the area that controlled odor and scent, and that they actually had modified sperm, so they passed on this avoidance of that smell to future generations. So this has been it's studied even more in fish, and I'll put up a table here that actually shows some of the highlights of research they've done on fish. Now, with the first three studies here, you see the brook trout, the spiny chromis, and the zebra fish. The parents were subjected to either higher or lower water temperatures and also low levels of oxygen. In their offspring, they noted there were actually changes to how they responded to them or their body chemistry. Now, perhaps more relevant to bass avoiding lures is the Atlantic molly. Now, these fish are adapted to live in springs with high levels of hydrogen sulfide, 
which is toxic. And they actually use DM to pass on traits to their offspring that made them more adapted to live in those areas. And then there's the curious case of the stickleback. And in this case, how the parent, how the father raised its young actually impacted the brain chemistry of the offspring. In this case, the fathers that were more attentive when they were raising their offspring, their brain chemistry changed. So when they were in the presence of predators, fish that were trying to eat them, they were less active. Without getting too technical, basically what they found is through the process of DM, the expression of an enzyme was turned on or off in these fish and changing the brain chemistry. So yeah, it's starting to get kind of technical here. So let's simplify this a second. Let me just really low level talk about these concepts and how it impacts fishing and can fish actually learn and pass this on. So when we talk about TP, once again, that's that transgenerational plasticity or TP. Basically what it is, is when a parent learns to avoid something or sees something as a negative, it's able to pass on avoidance or staying away from that threat to future generations. And unlike evolution, where they actually change the DNA with TP or with the DM, basically what they're doing is the parents are able to pass on this knowledge, even if the offspring have never encountered this threat before, they're able to pass on this information to future generations. So we don't really see this in humans, but for the rest of the planet, actually it's fairly common. Like we talked about, it happens in some animals, but it also has been documented in a lot of cases in plants, in bacteria, even fungus. Now, what usually triggers TP is stress. Things like predators, uh, high and low levels of oxygen, or a high and low temperature extremes, also scarcity of food. Guess what? That sounds like angling pressure to me, getting caught, stuff that's stressed, being afraid of boats, finding out lures that are negative. So this wouldn't be uh, totally unexpected if it did get passed on. DNA methylation, it's not actually changing the DNA. So when we get back into DM, and again, that's DNA methylation. Remember, this isn't like evolution. It's not actually changing the DNA, where a gene that's not favorable is selected out of a gene pool. Ones with that gene, they don't pass on their genes. DM here, what it actually does is like taking a blueprint and it turns on which of the genes that they already have are expressed or they're not expressed. So to put it in simple terms, think of it like this. Say your DNA, you were predisposed to have a really hairy chest someday if you're a man. But through DM, that gene is not expressed. It doesn't get turned on. So even though you were predisposed to have that hairy chest, somehow it's suppressed. You don't actually get that hairy chest. That's what DM is. It's instead of actually changing your genes, it actually turns on and off what's actually expressed or what actually happens. So then where does that leave us? Obviously in fish and you know fungus and all sorts of things on the planet, they actually use these epigenetics to change how they help their future generations live better. And it's not always better. Sometimes it's actually to the, to the worse, but actually fish, it seems like are able to pass on some information to future generations. Now that might help explain things like why they're harder to catch, why they avoid boats and sonar. And especially, like I said, lures that they haven't bit for a long time. When you bring them back, they just don't bite again. It could explain it. We don't know for sure. Obviously, there's a whole lot more testing to be done here, but it's pretty interesting. It's kind of mind blowing to think that you can actually pass on your, your information to future generations. So I like to think of it this way. Basically, if you were looking for an excuse and do we really need one to buy a new lure? Well, I think this research probably says that trying new lures, new colors, stuff like that might make sense. We used to always think if you caught a fish, well, I can't come back tomorrow and catch them on the same lure. Got to try something different. Based on this research, you might not be able to catch that fish or its children or its grandchildren the next fishing trip or five years from now on that same bait because they're already avoiding it. They pass it on. So some of those lures don't work. Maybe now we know why. And if you want to go to the tackle store and spend all your paycheck on new lures, well, now you've got an excuse to do it.